Hello, this is Paxton. I got another video for you today. Uh, first off, I would like to thank everyone for subscribing and all the comments. If you make a suggestion on something that you want me to cover, I will do my best to get to it. Just if it's something that is more advanced, um, trying to take, do everything in order and work my way up and cover subjects uh, as they come so we can start with the basics and work our way up. All right, well, what we're going to do today is we're going to go over the wiki. Uh, I was planning on doing that, and somebody reminded me with a comment about going over it and learning how to read it and understand it. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use our current setup that we have now. Um, it's, I believe it was the last video I set this up. Um, this is the function that I've created. All it does is remove all weapons from the player. So we're going to look at that command, remove all weapons. So we're going to pull up the wiki. Easiest way to get that is type Bohemia wiki. Go down and look for uh, community.vicestudio.com. And this page here, I don't, really don't like trying to navigate through it. You, you may have better luck with it than me, but I just type in the search box what I want if I don't have it bookmarked already. That's why I would suggest go to all commands, this link here, and go ahead and bookmark this because this is, you're going to reference this quite often. Uh, what it is, it's a list of all the scripting commands. And the list is very long. There's no way you're going to remember all of this. Uh, there is a few of them, though, that you use quite often, and you will remember how to use them. But don't worry about it right now. Just if, you, if there's a certain task you want to complete, check this alphabetical order. See if they got something for you. Um, there's a lot of sets. It's, it's they're called setters and getters. Um, you probably use those quite frequently, like set position. Um, will give you if you go to set, look for this, this alphabetical order. I think I already said that, but um, you got a whole list of them here. Just break down. I'll show you how to to read it so you understand, so you can go through them and find which one is going to be more relevant to what you're trying to do. But um, as of right now, we're using remove all weapons command. We're going to take a look at that. I'll show you what that looks like in the wiki and go go over how they have everything laid out for you. All right. So here at the top, you'll see the name of the command, and then you're going to have some boxes here. This is version that was introduced. It also mentions that here. Uh, this is relevant. So you know how long the command's been available. If it's something that came out in Operation Flashpoint, then chances are it is, uh, it works. <laughs> and uh, if it's something that was released in the last update and it's not working for you, I wouldn't assume that's something you're doing wrong. It may be just the command isn't working right. It's not working as in intended. So just be aware of that. If I'm not saying don't use new commands, just tinker with them, make sure they work, and you may not want to release something using them until uh, you know it's working in all situations. Then the next you'll have uh, AL, EG, EL, or uh, AG, what that is. You can also hold your mouse over it and you get a little tool tip there on what it says, but the A stands for arguments, the E stands for effects. G is global, L is local. So, so this command here, all the arguments it takes would be local arguments, and the effects of it are global, which means if you remove a weapon, all weapons from a unit, all clients on the server will see that unit not have any weapons. Uh, if it were effects were local, the player would see himself lose the weapons but everyone else would see that unit still having weapons all right so going down the list we got the description this will give you a basic I basic idea on what the command does it may give you some hints on usage and when you'll use it 
and also it may give you another command that's similar to it that might do something else might be more relevant to what you're trying to do uh, this one here like it shows you to remove weapon item map you can do that to remove the, the map because remove all weapons would not remove the map and I I thought there was a remove item command for that not remove weapon but it may have it here so we can just test it and see which one I could be wrong and then going down to the syntax section here the first part is going to show you the basic layout of the argument and how things should be placed um, you have remove all weapons which here is the command and then after that for this one it has one argument unit name and for the the names that are not bold those are the arguments and they usually name them in a manner in which it gives you an idea of what the parameter type should be or the variable the variable should be uh, in this case it only takes one uh, and unit name is an object and then we have another section here which is a return value in this command it returns nothing kind of difficult to explain that when I come to a command that returns a value like this one down here actually a player is a command and it returns a value and what it is is the player object so that's why they're able to use remove all weapons player because it returns the player object uh, in our case we're not using that command we're using a variable that we created and we've obtained the player unit through our init player local dot sqf so it does the same thing just two ways of going about doing it and then after that you'll have your examples um, don't be ashamed to just copy and paste this over to your your mission give it a try um, that, that way you can see how it works um, and, and near the bottom here you'll have community made comments uh, that give you little pointers hence maybe expand expand on it and uh, kills own kid here he's he's a real good scripter he has a, a blog too and he, he comments a lot he stays on top of um, all of bohemia's stuff <laughs> all right so we got remove all weapons i'm going to do is i'm going to add another command into our mission and it's got a few more arguments to it so we can break those down and show you what another command looks like and this is one that's used quite often it's called add action and it, like most demand most of the commands it does exactly what it says it, it adds an action and what action is is the menu on the left side of the screen when you scroll the mouse wheel it does switch weapons open doors and some missions have like player menus that that's that's how you get that is with the add action as you can see here it came out 1.1 operation flashpoint it takes global arguments and the effects are local so any script that you run with this add action is going to run on the client that called the action but the arguments it takes in you got global arguments which makes this kind of funky to play around with at times um, we're not going to go over the, that description you may want to come and read it check it out what they got to say but let's go straight down here to the syntax and here here's the action the command name add action unit obviously the player or it doesn't have to be the player but if an object it could be almost any object in the game some of them you can't really use the add action uh, but a lot of them you can like light poles uh, or flag poles things like that you can and then it takes this argument after it as an array and then it has a list of all the arguments that array takes um, not all are not all of these you have to use anytime you have a long list go down and check the parameters down here because if it has optional in it you don't have to use them um, so you can actually I'll show you I can copy and paste this over you can actually just cut this off right here and do it that way 
if you were wanting to add, let's say, a condition, maybe a conditional statement in it, you would need to add. I would just go ahead and add all of them, and just don't give any value values for the optionals. Leave them uh, blank. Actually, I don't know if you can leave them blank. You can leave them I guess the booleans, that'd be easy to type false or true in it, but for something that takes a string, just use a null string, which that would just be a, something like that, just double quotes, empty like that, and that would get you past that argument if you don't want to use it. Now, with the add action command, it it's, it's kind of a complicated, not complicated, but there's a little more going on with it, because when you come here to the the script argument, it's taken in. It's actually taken in a code. It's you can look at it almost as another file, another SQF in itself, and it supplies you with an array of parameters that you can use to get access to the target caller and ID of the add action. Uh, the target is the object that the action is put onto. The caller is the object or the unit that or actually would be the player because that calls the the action. In our case we are adding this on the player and no other player is going to be able to have access to this action because we are adding it in a, a local SQF file. So this isn't going to be global everyone's not going to be able to see it only the person that it only the client that is added to will have access to this <coughs> so the target and the caller which you get you get these variables by this select zero this is select one because it's, it's basically an array um, the target and the caller is the same uh, when it comes to something like a door the door is a target because it gives you an action to open and close the door the, the unit that is calling to open the door or close the door is is the caller, so that that's where that comes into play. So what we're going to do is add a little simple add action on our unit. Um, it's not going to have that exciting of functionality. We're going to do something a little more exciting than a hint, though. But actually, I probably shouldn't even say exciting. What we'll, we'll do is the title here. The title is the text that displays in game. We're just going to say do damage. And that just all this is is a string. Now the script here. This is where it gets a little more complicated. Um, all this is going to take place inside double quotes. So all we're going to do is we're going to this select zero. which gets the target which is the player we're going to set damage which is another command it's pretty self-explanatory the object you're setting damage to comes before it and the amount of damage goes after it one is 100 percent damage that will that would kill the unit uh, if you do point seven you can look at that as a uh, 70% damage, or something like that. So that won't kill kill the unit. And you have to end that with a semicolon. And if you had a, a more complicated script, something more than a one-liner like that, you would want to have that into a function or into a SQF file by itself. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. Let's do a do hill. It's we'll just keep it a simple script, but I'll show you another way to call it. Um, we're going to execute. Oops, yep, execute. Again, we're going to name a script. We're going to call it hill dot sqf. Single quote. And semicolon. See what's going on here is all this code is inside double quotes. So when you use execute, execute, just basically execute the script here is what this is saying. Um, and 
this it takes in a string, so it's got to be in quotes. But if we were to use double quotes, this quote here would cancel out this would put be the end of this one. So you see where that would be. That's why that's a problem. That's why you have to change it to a single quotes. That way, this doesn't end that one. So these two end each other, and then these two right there. All right. So our heel script, we're going to want a parameter to be passed in. We can do that by creating an array right here. And our array, is go we're going to take an argument that the add action supplies, which is the same as the above, so this select zero. And then we're going to also need to create that script. So we're going to get create a script called hill.sqf. And then we'll just do the same thing. Select zero, and let's do player set damage zero. So it completely heals the player. Looks good. Another semicolon. Space there. If I don't need it, but I like how it looks like that. Looks cleaner. All right, so all that looks good. So we'll come over here. We'll make sure we got our mission selected. And we're gonna get, go ahead and launch that. Now I got Arma up and running, and I'm showing show script errors. I can't remember if I showed you this before, but in basic I have it set to Windows, and in the advanced mode author show script errors so if there's an error shows up if something happens it will give you the clues on how to fix it it will give you the script name that the error happened in it will give you the line number and if it's an argument that was let's say I was expecting an object and you send it a string that's exactly what it will say it said hey on line 23 your revive script I was expecting an object, received string, and that's how you, that's, that's so you know exactly where to go, what's wrong, and you can get an idea on how to fix it. Alright, so we've got our mission running. Let's go here and try this out. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. First of all, we just do damage and see my guys hurt. Do heal. Uh oh. Hmm. I didn't find that script. So I can't hit my guy. Alright. Spell it wrong. Simple mistake. All right. Well, basically, that will heal the. The player. I'm not going to restart everything up just to show you that. But one thing I do want to show is if you notice, set damage is 0.7. If I hit do damage again, it's not going to kill the player. It's going to set the damage to 0.7 again. 
because I'm not adding anything to it. Um, if you wanted to do that, say your heal script, say you, you, you didn't want the player to be able to heal himself 100%, like this is right here, this is, you're 100% good once you do this action. Um, if you didn't want that to happen, let's do create a variable call current damage kind of a long name but it will work it's clear and a lot of times if you use don't be too scared of using long variable names because when you go back to see you know, look at your script it could be a lot of times go by you can clearly see what it is and what you're doing you want to try to script for the reader and not the writer um, what I mean by that is the writer may want to just do CD for current damage. Three months, six months from now, you're not going to know what CD is. That's coding for the writer, making it easy. Because you can say you will use CD a lot throughout your script. You can just keep typing the CD, CD, and it doesn't take any time to type. You can code quicker. Um, but current damage that takes you know a little more time to to type out and if you're using it quite often it could get annoying but that's why that's coding for the reader and not the writer that's to be taken care of that's a little food for thought but on current damage what we're going to do is we want to get the damage of the player notice I put two M's in there but if you go here and check the wiki I'm not sure why they've done it this way, I don't know. But if you go up here and check set damage, where is it at? Set damage, they have both one with one M, the other one with two M's. But with get damage, They only have the one with two M's. Why? I don't. I don't know. Maybe they have it. They just didn't document it in this list. I don't know. But that's why I got two M's up there. So you want to say you want every time a person gets healed or revived or or whatever it is, you only want to be able to be healed thirty percent, maybe point three. So we'll do um, heal amount. Let's do equals zero point three. So then, when you set damage, because we're healing the player, we're still setting damage. We're actually healing the player because we're adding to what it has, which is current damage. plus heal amount and just to make sure that it interpreted right I'm going to put it in parentheses I'm just looking over make sure everything looks good and it does so we're going to start start our mission back Should just take a second. I'm trying to think of something I may may can cover while we wait for it to load, but I can't can't really think of anything right now. I'm kinda tired. I'm going to go. What you may want to do is just to get used to it all, just, just go through some of these and try them out. Some are pretty specific on what they do. Um, they won't work. <laughs> I wish they had uh, categories for each of these because some of them, like four, 
for each. It, it kind of it's a little different than the commands we're using right now. They're not doing it's not really doing a specific thing in game. It's doing something for the script itself. So I wish there's a way they would organize it so it's a little a little easier to understand. But we'll we'll get into all that. No need to worry. There we go. So we got do damage, do heal. Let's do some damage. I'm hurt. Heal. And I got an error. What did I do? Player set damage. Find variable and expression. Current. Alright. So it's probably a spelling error. Yep, I didn't finish typing out my variable. Even with autocomplete, I still didn't finish typing my variable out. Oh, yep, we'll go ahead and launch it. And. I'm trying to think. I went over. I think I did that in the Knit Player local. I went over simple if then conditional statements. I went over the not. So if not is join in progress, that's what the exclamation point is here. See, I don't have that there. Um, I need to get into some more statements or conditional statements. It's called a control loop, which is like a while loop, a for loop. I'll get into those in the next video. I want to wrap this one up here, though. I'm about done. Um, I just want to get that error I just made fixed and show you that's working. But maybe in the next video I'll get in some, some loops and some for each statements and things like that. So you can have some more, a little more control of things that are happening. Let's give this a second load. Shouldn't take long. It's seven kilobytes. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that, but um, I actually just killed my player because I got my heal backwards. So I'm setting the damage to seven, and then I'm adding three, which puts it at one, so that I'm healing, I'm killing the player. Um, so I need to change that to minus, but we'll leave it at that so you can see that it added on to the current damage. It didn't set the damage to 0.3, it got the player's damage, added three more, and killed me. So my heal did the opposite, but as you can see that would have worked if I had my operator correct, but we'll just blame that on me being tired, it's a good excuse, I'll take that one today. And uh, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and post in the comments. Check me out on Twitter. Um, if you haven't subs subscribed, please do. And I'll have a great, great day.